Hey everybody, today I am teaming up with Skills and Trade and we're gonna take this piece of copper here and Tyler's gonna shine it up and then I'm gonna make something totally awesome with it. So stay tuned and I'll show you what's going on. Now real quickly, let me tell you about Skills and Trade. Tyler does a channel where he polishes all kinds of metals to a mirror finish. Sometimes he uses power tools, sometimes he polishes by hand, and it always gets this amazing, amazing result. And he actually came up in my feed a long time ago when I was trying to figure out how to polish the metals that I use when I was making blanks and uh, selling those and then making blanks for myself. So seriously, go check out his channel because it is the perfect partnership to show you how you need to polish up your metals in order to make pretty amazing jewelry. So when I saw his channel, I knew I needed to team up with him to make something. And I sent him this piece of copper. You could see how crappy it was on the front. And he polished it so beautifully. I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to go check out his channel. Make sure you do it and you'll see where he shines this exact piece of copper. So for this project, I decided as a thank you for him making this gorgeous piece of metal for me, I wanted to do something for him and I decided to make something with his logo. So today I'm going to be making a keychain. I started by hand cutting the copper into um, the shape of his logo and I'm gonna tell you this project is like blood sweat and tears I spent forever on Photoshop trying to get his logo doing what I needed it to do for the project I am of the age where when I graduated from high school I had to learn how to use DOS in order to be able to get a diploma it was like pre Windows so I have not kept up super well with technology. I know you're shocked. So it took me seriously forever to be able to figure out how to do what I needed to with Photoshop. I have a very, very basic knowledge of like two things. So I used it to make this template here, which I glue on with rubber cement onto the metal that I'm using when I'm hand cutting. Then I use my little saw here and I just keep the left side of the blade touching the outline of the template. As I have dust building up on my cutting surface, it kind of blurs the line and makes it so that I can't tell where I need to cut next. So I'll just blow that off. If I'm cutting a lot of things, I'll go ahead and use a shop vac that I clamp to my um, bench block here that's not a bench block I don't remember what it is anyway <laughs> but I'll just clamp a shop vac nozzle on there and I'll go ahead and use that to just continually just suck up that dust from the metal and then I'm constantly using cut lube in order to make sure that my blade can slide nicely through that metal you really need it to glide or else your teeth of your blade are going to get caught on the metal and then you'll break your blades this is actually at double speed right now i filmed part of it for a second there for you at regular speed but it takes so long that basically the remainder of this video is going to be double speed so once i got that kind of separated from the larger piece of metal I went ahead and cut from a different um, angle, I guess, in order to get those inner pieces. You can see the throat of the saw here is only so wide. I think it's a five and a half inch throat. And so the metal that I was cutting from was just too big to be able to spin that saw around. And it was getting caught on um, the sheet of metal. So I just had to go ahead and come from another angle, cut this out to free it from that larger piece, and then go ahead and cut the rest of the piece there. Of course, you're gonna see my kids coming through because I have them.
My two-year-old was my assistant for this project, he thinks. I like to use lube on the blade every time I come around a corner. You have to move the blade faster in shorter strokes and so I don't want to overheat the blade and the cut lube helps it to keep from overheating and snapping. Now once I've finished cutting this, I am going to use some transfer paper that you would use for making circuit boards and I'm going to print out a negative that I'm then going to transfer onto this piece of metal and I'm going to use that as a resist before I start working with chemicals. So now this is all cut out. I'm just going to peel away that template and underneath there you will see the basic shape that we're going to use for the keychain. So here is the uh, negative that I made that I'm going to be using and I went ahead and put that in Google Docs after I created it in Photoshop and then I'm going to print that out and I printing a test sheet and then after I printed a test sheet to make sure that it's the way I want I'm going to print this on the glossy side of this circuit board transfer paper so I'm going to leave a link in the comments to everything that I'm using like I always do so I'm not going to get too into details of these things but I'm going to need nail polish remover so pure acetone and my iron set to the highest heat and some gloves and some paper towels and then that negative that I printed on the transfer paper and I used a um, a thing I can't remember what it's called <laughs> the printer is a laser printer not an inkjet printer that's what I'm trying to say anyway so I'm using the acetone to just clean the heck out of this thing just to make sure there are no oils or anything left on it so that the toner will then transfer onto that copper the acetone isn't dangerous for your hands but I am wearing gloves just to make sure that I don't get any oils from my hands um, transferred back onto that copper and this is the part where I realized that I should have printed it backwards so back to the drawing board I'm going to be turning that over printing a new one that's facing the right direction you need it to face backwards uh, when you are printing it because once you put it onto um, put that sorry once you put the negative onto your metal it's going on there backwards so you just got to print it in reverse so I'm just gonna iron this for ever on high heat to try and make sure that I get that really melted on there and fused to the metal so the problem is though I forgot that my printer is a piece of garbage and so you'll see as I peel this back this did not work now it will work for you I can just about guarantee it the problem is that my printer is just junk so you'll see it just did not fill in like it should have you can see what it was supposed to do and you can look up YouTube tutorials to see how that's actually supposed to work but since it didn't I went ahead and decided to fill it in with a permanent marker so this is good for making a blue patina which is by the way what we're doing here now I decided to use this technique because Tyler's skills and trade logo actually has a blue fist holding a wrench here so that's what this is going to be and when we're doing a patina like this what's happening is a chemical reaction between the copper and the chemicals that I'll be using and it brings out the blue that is um, oxidizing inside the copper science by Kate so as I finish this up what I'm wanting to do is just make sure that the lines are nice and clean I can get it nice and thick on there to cover up anything that I don't want to turn blue so this is the resist I'm trying to keep the chemicals that I'm using from touching 
all of these parts that I'm covering with marker and toner and things like that. So here is my fume chamber. This is what we need to make our blue patina. It's just a Tupperware container. Inside I have some sponges from the dollar store. We need regular cleaning ammonia, some white vinegar, table salt. Kosher salt actually works a little better, but I had table salt on hand. And then I'm gonna use some tape for this. So I'm using tape on the back of this in order to create a resist on the back of the piece because I don't want to patina the back of it as well. So I open this up and I'm just gonna pour a bunch of ammonia inside of my fume chamber. Then I'm going to set it right inside, set my piece right inside, put some vinegar on it. Normally I would mix the salt and vinegar in a spray bottle and just spritz it on but I just could not find my spray bottle, so I'm just pouring and sprinkling. So I'm sprinkling the salt over the vinegar onto the part of the copper that I want to patina. Hopefully that made sense. Every place that the salt and vinegar touches the metal, it is going to turn it to a blue patina. The areas that don't have salt will still change color, but it gets a a brighter blue like this right here where the salt is so this was about 20 minutes later after I had closed the lid and I could see that I had missed some places with salt so I just went ahead and sprinkled some more salt over those areas that weren't changing color as quickly and then sealed it back up now this takes a long time so two days later I had let it sit in there for a day and a half, you can see it looks crusty and disgusting on this one, but that's on purpose. <laughs> so it took about a day and a half to get to the color that I was looking for. And then it's just kind of like the sloshy goo on top of it. And so I went ahead and let that goo dry on it. And so it's just this crust on there. And I'm using my acetone now to just remove the rest of the toner and the marker that are still on the metal that I was using as a resist. And I remembered why it's a good idea to buy nitrile gloves instead of vinyl. So I went ahead and took off the gloves and finished it up. I was only really trying to protect my fingernails from the ink anyway. And I just took off all of the resist that I could. And you'll see there's still some blackening there and I'll get to that later. But from here, what I wanted to do was create a different texture around the lines of the fist here. And so I'm using a, just a sharp metal tool to kind of scratch the lines into the outline of the design there. And no, this is not a cuticle pusher. I would never use my nice cuticle pusher for scratching copper. So I'm just using different sides of my tool there to see what kind of, um, I guess, engraving it's making on the metal. So if I turn it one direction, it was just making kind of small lines. If I turned it the other direction, it was more smooth. And so I'm just turning it to the direction that I want to get the finished look that I want. When you're doing things like this, you just have to get creative. You can see around here, there's still that blackening. So just off camera, I took care of that with some quadruple zero steel wool, just ultra fine. And then I'm bringing that super shine back with a pro polish pad. So I wanted to maintain that crazy, crazy shine that Tyler had put on there. So I was being really careful not to mess with the texture too much um, and really work to bring it back with that steel wool and the pro polish. And now it is time to stamp. So everybody knows my cute little electrical tape trick here for keeping my lines straight. I'm starting in the middle of the word when I'm stamping this one. And that's because I had already practiced and determined where the center of the blank was. 
um, the center of the piece and I wanted to make sure that I got it lined up really well because I'm not kidding you getting to this point took days so I only had one and I did not want to have to start over so I was just trying to be really careful to keep everything centered and lined up and you can see the lines around that fist and that wrench are a lot more smooth it's not completely blue there are black areas and brown areas and blue areas and that to me is just the oh beautiful thing about doing that verdigris patina it's just so organic and to me that is the perfect companion with copper because copper is just such an organic and workable metal you can do so much with it and this is just one of my favorite things to do so now that that's all stamped on there I'm just going to use my Sharpie oil marker here to go ahead and fill in the stamped impressions. I didn't want to use anything like a liver of sulfur because I would have to buff that off with an abrasive and all I want is to go ahead and darken those stamped images. I do not want to wreck that polish and shine that Tyler has put on here. So I love the finished piece. So the blue verdigris verdigris i'm saying it wrong that patina just gives it this super industrial feeling look in the end and i went ahead and used a clear rust-oleum spray uh, to go ahead and cover that the um, blue patina on this actually will flake off over time if you don't seal it with something so i did use a spray clear coat please go check out Tyler's channel. It is Skills and Trade. I'm gonna link it in the description. I love that this piece stayed so shiny in the parts that were raised, but that that chemical reaction caused some pitting and some patina and some blackening and just kind of a grunge look. Tyler's channel for Skills and Trade, he does this high, high polish but I love the way that this industrial look went with his logo. So that's my take on it. And I hope you enjoyed the video and you are going to love Skills and Trades channel. So again, go check it out, see how to polish your metals, find out how to repair things in your house, save some money, you're gonna love it. Thanks so much for collabing with me, Tyler, and you guys have a great day.